Good morning, everybody. This is Brother Leslie Wiles, King James Bible Baptist Church, 1402 East Fulton Street, Garden City, Kansas. It is the 3rd of May, the year of our Lord, 2020. And welcome to our online sermonette Bible study. Glad to have you. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus paid it all. Folks, how's everybody? I hope everybody is well. It is 845, 846 in the morning, Central Daylight Time. It's, it's a pretty day out here in Garden City. We're <laughs> getting a little mini heat wave going on. Temperatures going up and down like crazy, so, you know. And it's dry. We need some rain, so the dust and everything and the allergies are, are pretty bad, too. You know, um, they're um, opening up Kansas a little bit here and there. I can have church up to 15 people, which is fine. It's about all I can get in here. But anyway, we're going to have some We're gonna have some folks come around 1030 and all that. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be preaching on a topic that's sure to shake a lot of people up. <laughs> Guaranteed to offend, and it is. This is a sermon that I don't like to preach on, but it has to be done at least once or twice a year. It's extremely important. It is, you know, the state of the union, the state of the world, the state of affairs. This was written, Paul wrote this letter to the Romans. Paul, hey, Lord, Paul wrote this letter to the Romans. And it told them what they were doing. And when you read this, when we study this, you're going to say, my goodness, he's talking about the year 2020. So, listen, let's go to the Lord in prayer first, all right? Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your blessings. Uh, Lord, I just I pray you'd give unction and anointing to preach and teach this word that will not come back void. Father, bless all that hear it. And Father, um, well, I just ask the Holy Ghost right now to please, please, please bring conviction. Conviction so souls can be saved. Father, we just ask your the Holy Ghost to do a mighty work. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Well, folks, welcome. Um, you got a King James Bible? I recommend you use one. That's all I preach out of. So get you a Bible out, and we're going to go to Romans chapter 1. And um, <laughs> let me tell you something. I'm fixing, I'm fixing to preach on something here. And as I do, we're going to you know, we're gonna do a little commenting on it. And I'm going to tell you something right now. It's going to blow your mind. Nothing tells it like the King James Bible. These are these other NIVs, those are corruptions. Those are corruptions. You know, God and throughout history has preserved his perfect word. Yes, God is able to do that. There are people who actually believe that God is not capable of preserving his perfect word throughout history. The fact is he did. He did. It's the King James Bible. And it tells it like it is, and it's got the power. So uh, get your Bibles open. <clears throat> Go to Romans chapter 1. Now, um, before I start off here, I'm, you know, I want to do a shout out. King James Bible Baptist Church, New York City, New York. Yes, the largest outdoor ministry. They have their tables set up. Not a whole lot of people walking around, but by the grace of God, they got their tables out there. Brother Brian and crew giving out peanut butter sandwiches and bottles of water to the people around. Of course, the, a lot of homeless folks go by, and that ministry blesses countless numbers of people in New York City. Pray for Brother Brian Kelly and the platoon over at King James Bible Baptist Church, New York City, New York. They're there right now, um, Brother Kelly. You get a chance later on sometime to check out his videos, check out his online sermons. Amazing. But anyway, um, pray for those folks. Um, pray for all the folks that are still shut in and, you know, locked down because of this, you know, Kung flu, <laughs> Corona bit. But, you know, um, I think it'll be all right. And, you know, the Bible says the just shall live by faith. Okay. And that's what we need to do. We need to live by faith. 
Not by sight, but by faith. All right, Romans chapter one, let's do this thing. Let's do this. <clears throat> you ready? <laughs> Thus saith the Lord, hear ye the word of the Lord. <clears throat> there we go. Verse number 16, Romans 1, 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Amen, amen. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God hath showed it to them for the invisible things of him from the creation of God, because God has given you a conscience. You know what you're doing, and you know when you're doing is wrong. You know when you steal, that's wrong. You know when you kill, that's wrong. Those are natural laws. What do you mean natural laws, preacher? Let me tell you something. Throughout history, I don't care what civilization, whether they were Christian or pagan, you stole from them, that was a crime. Fact. You come and you murder somebody. I don't care what civilization you were at. That was a crime. You took somebody's woman or something. Yeah, it's a crime. Even in pagan societies, natural laws. Yes, indeed. For the invisible things of him, verse 20. From the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead. So they are without excuse. The heavens themselves declare the glory of God. Amen. All right. Verse 21. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And they changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever and ever. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise unto the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of the error which was met. And even as they did not like to retain the knowledge, to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, covetousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implicable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that which they commit such God, things are worthy of death, 
not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Boom. Let's go over that again. Let's go over that again. Oh boy. Paul wrote this to the Romans 2,000 years ago. And boy, does it sure look like 2020. For this cause, God gave them up into vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use unto which is against nature. And likewise also men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lusts one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly. What's going on right now? LGBT, QBT, XYZ, perversion. Absolute abomination. The Bible does not condone that kind of activity. It is sinful. It will bring your society down. I'm sorry, that's not my words. Thus saith the Lord. And there are people out there now who have gotten so far away from God, so deep in their sin, that God has just said, fine, you've rejected me. And he handed him over to the devil. That's going to happen. And you know it's sad. It shouldn't have to happen. But the fact is, we're looking at a picture of modern day America. Of modern day planet Earth. <clears throat> My, how we haven't changed in 2,000 years. Lord have mercy, professing themselves to be wise they became fools. How many of these people profess to be wise, saying, oh, this and this and this, but they deny God. Oh, we've been around millions of years, blah, 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 blah. Darwinism and all this bit. They're not wise at all. They're not wise at all. Amazing. Pressing themselves to be wise, verse 22, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image. Idolatry still goes on today. Idolatry still goes on today. The number one church of idolatry is the Catholic Church. Yes, sir. Your Mary statues and venerating and Nothing but pure idolatry. And you know what? This Bible's talking about. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanliness, through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. You know, there's a reason why man is created a particular way and woman is created a particular way. And when they come together in the bonds of matrimony like they should be, God will bless that marriage. God will bless that. And when they do, they create children. That's the whole point behind the sexual. It's for husband and wife, for reproduction, and also for loving one another. What God puts together, let no man put asunder. That's what it is. Anything outside that is absolute sin. It is fornication, it is adultery, and it is sin. God will not tolerate it. It is an abomination. Okay? Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served a creature more than the creator who is blessed forever and ever. Well, who are these people? These are the animal rights wackos. They love the animals more than people. Oh, save the whales, save the snails. Saved a six-legged horny toad or whatever it is. But they have no problem slaughtering children, innocent children, created in the image of God. Slaughtering them by the millions. Let me tell you something, the wrath of God will fall on this country unless it repents. And it better repent pretty darn quickly. Because the Lord is coming. And let me tell you something. Don't think for a minute he's forgotten. 
the lives of those babies lost. Don't ever think that he's forgotten that. Every single soul that has perished in the womb is crying out for vengeance, crying out for the Lord to vindicate. You don't believe me? No, oh, just wait. If you've had an abortion, God will forgive you, but you better repent. You need to turn. God will forgive you. He'll wash away your sins. He'll take away your guilt. But you got to repent. God's wrath is coming on a wicked generation, on a God-hating nation, on a God-rejecting nation, a nation that turns its back on God. God will turn its back on it. Well, preacher, what's keeping us? Why are we still afloat? I firmly believe it's because there are hopefully a couple million Bible-believing, born-again Christians pray for this country. I believe that's the only reason why God hasn't destroyed this nation. You know, this nation's one of the sin... I mean, Europe is bad, too. This entire world is a giant cesspool of sin. And God will punish. You know... No preacher, stop scaring it, blah, blah, blah. We don't want it. Let me tell you something. You think this stuff is bad now, just wait till you can't buy anything. You can't buy anything. They're going to rig it around you up, and you're going to be taking a mark. Huh. What's going to happen eventually? It's going to happen. You know, friends, let me tell you something. What this Bible talks about in Romans chapter 1 right here, Oh, the liberals hate this one. <laughs> oh, they hate this one. They hate Romans chapter 1. Because it tells people exactly. Think about it. Tell me if this ain't the year 2020. Think about this. Verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, otherwise pretend he don't exist. Oh, I'm an atheist, liar. I ain't no atheist. Don't give me that nonsense. I'll laugh in your face. And even then, as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, Full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers. Boy, that just that just that, that's practically everybody on planet Earth right now. Backbiters, traitors, people you can't trust. Yeah, everybody's stabbing everybody in the back. Oh, you got a dollar more than me? Oh, you're my friend. T. Turn around and stab you in the back. Backbiters. People you can't trust. They're everywhere. Why? Because these people are in sin. They won't come out of her. Backbiters, haters of God. Oh, there are plenty of them. <laughs> Repent. I'm telling you. Despiteful. Proud. Boasters. <laughs> Here's one. Inventors of evil things. Oh, <laughs> yeah, your day's coming. Disobedient to parents. You know, you look at these programs, you get these kids' programs. My kids watch this garbage, this Disney, a Disney straight from the pits of hell, telling the kids they can disrespect their parents. And they do. Let me tell you something. God's wrath is coming. Don't ever think you will escape punishment. Don't ever think that he won't chasten you. He chastens those that are his children. He chastens those he loves that belong to him. But if you ain't saved, he's going to leave you to your own devices and you're going to enter hell fire like a bullet. Why? Disobedient to parents without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, sodomites, lesbianism, 
It's not natural. Oh, there are more than one, more than two genders, man and woman. There ain't no other. Ain't no other. <laughs> you know, it's funny since this coronavirus business came out. You know, they talking about, oh, there's like 150 genders. Really, when they <laughs> came to get their money from the government, the, the little stimulus check, you could have to either check male or female. There is no other. <laughs> so I guess they all had to line up and figure out what they really were. You know, it's more confusion from Satan. The devil's doing everything he can to bring as many people to hell as possible because he's heading that way. He's a desperate criminal. And what is he doing? He's sending people that way. All the people have to do is turn to the Lord Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sin. He's the only one qualified to pay for it. But then again, there are people who did not like to retain God in their knowledge. They're like, well, I don't want to know about him. Willful ignorance what it is. <laughs> so he gave them over to a reprobate mind. And boy, we've got some reprobate minds out there that could care less. You wonder why we've got the problems. And yet God made it so easy for a person to get saved. They want to hate on the Lord. He said, love your neighbor. He healed the sick. He raised people from the dead. If these people want to worship something else, don't even qualify. Worship a tree, worship a rock. <laughs> yeah, that'll do you. That's, that's about as much good as we're worshiping a dead horse. Lord have mercy. But yeah, this is what's going on. And it goes without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implicable, unmerciful who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. You know how many times have we been told what God says about that? And all the things that are going on. Let me tell you something, even in Islamic countries, okay, you still and cut your hands off. You do sodomy or lesbianism, you die. They stone you to death over there. Kind of like the old biblical, Jewish biblical thing. You take them out and stone them to death. Jesus did never said to do that. Jesus, Jesus spoke, said you spoke to love these folks. Not, that's not an excuse to sin. We're not supposed to love them by saying, oh, it's okay to be that way. No, we love them and let them know, here, what's going to happen if you don't repent? You're going to enter hell fire like a bullet. The fact that God became a man and went to the cross and paid it all for you, you don't have to do that. But the problem is people love that sin. They get into the flesh so deep. It's like crack cocaine. You get into the flesh so bad, you get in there so deep, you get so far away from God, the devil just does a number on you. Why? Because you turned away from God. You turned away from his word. Romans 1, 28 again. And even as they did not like to retain in their knowledge. Yes. Pretend he doesn't exist. <laughs> I got news for you, friends. Judgment is coming. Judgment is coming. On this country, on this world. Why? Because they choose sin. They would rather live like the devil. Some people are there thinking, oh, I just asked Jesus into my heart. I can live like the devil. Jesus said, let you repent. What does that mean? That means realize you want a path of destruction and you turn, change your mind and you turn to the one who can wash away your sins, the Lord Jesus Christ. You've got to go to him for forgiveness. And when you do that in faith, you're at Calvary. You're at the cross. Because that's that blood that's shed down on that cross. That washes away your sin, friends. Not your good deeds. You ain't got any good deeds. Your righteousness like mine, the Bible said, is like filthy rags. Filthy rags is not allowed in heaven. 
You must be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed in the blood? Have you been to the cross? Have you been to the cross and got your salvation? Because it's at that cross, that instrument of death, that instrument of punishment, that instrument of capital punishment. That's where you go. That's where a lost, hell-bound person goes for salvation at the cross and nowhere else. You've got an opportunity now, friend. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, you need to stop your fornicating. You need to stop doing this. Because there's going to come a time when the Lord will come for his church and those left behind. God help you, friend. You need to get saved. You need to get saved now. Well, preacher, what have I got to do to get saved? The Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You need to turn to him and, and confess your sins. Say, Lord, I've sinned. I'm, I, I need forgiveness. I know I'm going down the wrong path. I turn to you and ask you to forgive me of my sins. Wash me in your blood. Give me a new birth. He'll do it that quick. Amen. God ask him with sincerity. And let me tell you something. I can't tell you. To, I can't make you do it. The Holy Ghost has got to grab hold of you. That's that feeling that you get. And when you fight it, it's an uncomfortable feeling. That's conviction. That's the Holy Ghost telling you, hey, knock it off. Come home. What about it? What about it, friend? What about it? What? Let me ask you a question. If you were to die right now, do you know? Do you know without without any doubt where you'd go? Seriously. You know, I just preached on one of the most <laughs> the liberals call it the most offensive chapter in the Bible, because it tells it like it is. Yeah. <laughs> For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Who believe that unrighteousness is the truth. People that call the good bad and the bad good. There's coming a time. Let me tell you something. It's coming a time. Let me ask you a question. Do you know without a doubt that you're going to go to heaven when you die? All you got to do is right where you are, right where you are, you need to ask the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, Jesus said you need to repent. You turn. You turn to him and say, Lord Jesus Christ, I know I'm a sinner. Lord, I'm going down a terrible path. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. You rose again on the third day as it is written. I ask you now to wash away my sins with your precious blood. Give me a new birth and a new life. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And you know the beautiful thing about it, friend? You give your life to the Lord. You become the bone of his bone and the flesh of his flesh. You are saved to the other most. What do I do now, preacher? Get into your King James Bible. Grab your King James Bible. And uh, start out in the Gospel of John. You're a new believer. That's a real good place to hit the refresh button. Hit that refresh button. Before you start reading the Word, ask the Lord Jesus Christ to open up your mind and your heart to His Word. He will. Ask Him to put a fire in your heart for His Word. Lord, put a fire in my heart for Your Word and for souls. Change me, Lord. Mold me. Make me the person you want me to be. He'll do it. And you'll be very happy that he did. This is Brother Leslie Wilds, pastor King James Bible Baptist Church, 1402 East Fulton Street, Garden City, Kansas. 
<clears throat> Friends, <clears throat> I'm telling you, you don't want to perish with this sinful world. This world is perishing. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. May the Lord richly bless you all, friends, until this evening. Peace.